All right. Once again, thank you for joining us. This is Black Summit. I'm Hendrix. And I'm Brooks. And we have the lovely Miss Ken. Back in the place to be one She's more time. She's back. Day. Where you been? You we've guys try- got rid of me. Wow. We've been trying to get you back <laughs> we can on. never do that. Not to the president. She hasn't been answering <laughs> oh, our calls. Start that? She hasn't been like, you know, I, really, I was Brooks. like, man, I've been trying to get her on, you know? Brooks, I see you she, all the time. She's like, talk to my team. I'm like, dang. <laughs> wow. I didn't know you had a team. <laughs> you have a team now. Good team. Let's be for real. She's she making it in the world now. Oh, you know? my gosh. She, she you guys can't. are terrible. So uh, <laughs> bring the audience up to speed. What's been going on with you these past couple of days when you wasn't blessing us with your presence? Well, I went to L.A. I went to, oh, nice. you know, Brooks out of town. Nice. Yeah. And it was ghetto. Oh I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Dang, she coming back trying to ride. I'm playing, I'm playing. It was cool. The only complaints I have are the Uber drivers. Oh. I've never been in Uber rides to where, like, I really felt sick to my stomach when I got out. Like, so I'm so serious. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But other than that, LA was cool. I didn't get a chance to, like, really go to the beach. But I walked around, you know, you know, saw the town. It was was pretty cool. Was it business or personal? Um, a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah. But it was fun, though. It's good. We're, I got to go back. We'll be glad to have you back here yeah. safe and sound with us. Absolutely. Blessing Thank us you. once again. Thank yeah. you guys for actually inviting me instead yeah. of, you know, kicking me to the curb. But we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> nah, we had to have you, have you back on, you know. Um, the first one was great, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Very insightful. And this is such a good time to, like, come on to the show because, you know. It's like the fall or getting close to the fall, you know. You know, plus, so. plus, we're growing because once we get large, we don't know you. <laughs> wow. So then I'm going to have to get in contact with your people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The That's team, crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to the people who are uh, all our newest subscribers. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming on and uh, watching us. Uh, uh, I didn't really expect to get this many followers honestly i did oh i thought you gotta think positive so, you know to, yeah you know not this quickly i'll say that not this quickly so you know here we go we're here people tune in to hear what i got to say that's right <laughs> even if it makes no sense that's right <laughs> all right so we're gonna hop into some of the topics here today um the fight canelo versus charlo um just went down um, Canelo wins again. I was right, you know. <laughs> so we'll be talking about that, um, and then we'll be talking about Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, and Taylor Swift. Uh, they are eloped. Really? No. I was oh. like, what? I was just, what? <laughs> I was just making sure that you guys were listening, you know. <laughs> no, but uh, they've they've been together. Um, the past two weeks, they finally came out and made it public. Taylor Swift's been going to the games and stuff like that. So um, we'll be talking about that because that's all everybody's talking about, I feel like, you know. Um, and then we'll be talking about uh, the divorce rate in the black community. Um, so we'll be hopping into that. Um, so we got some numbers on that and we'll be talking about that as well. But also, um, we're going to be talking about um, sex trafficking as well. And we'll be delving into that a little bit as well. So, um, but we're going to start off with the fight. Canelo versus Charlo. Um, Canelo Alvarez has won again. Um, he has now won belts in how many different weight uh, weight classes? Uh, I can't even keep up. I think it's like five different weight classes or something say, like yeah, that. Or from five. Well, well to weight to, because when I first heard of him, he was well to weight. Oh, okay. Well to weight. Middleweight, yeah, uh, light heavy. So yeah, he's he's That's won them, them. he's won them all, and he has won again. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was an interesting fight. I felt like I wasted my money, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you guys' thoughts on the fight, um, and then we'll hop into everything else. Let's hear your thoughts. Come on, Hendrix, you're supposed to be starting this out. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, I had Canelo winning regardless uh mm-hmm. when me me and my cousin was looking at the spread because sometimes we bet on games mm-hmm. and fights <clears throat> so on the over under the parlay bets were like absurd 
it's, it's the only way you could win money on these fights is if you would have took the underdog, which was Charlo. Right. So even Vegas had Canelo winning by yeah. you know even though he won by a uh, unanimous decision, he got a ten eight round because he actually dropped Charlo in the seventh. Normally in Canelo fights, I say roughly, but around the seventh. Between the seventh and the ninth, is Canelo is known to stop fighters, mm -hmm. you know. So, <clears throat> but what I really like is, uh, did you hear what Terence Crawford had to say about the whole? No, what do you say? Well, initially Terence Crawford wanted to fight Charlo, mm -hmm. but after that, Terence Crawford said, you know, Charlo, Charlo is not on his radar anymore. He said, man, he kind of just, uh, he just kind of just just tried to survive. He didn't put an effort. He showed Canelo too much respect. Mm -hmm. He didn't fight. Like how he would normally fight. So Crawford said he's not even worrying about uh, Charlo. And then Charlo called him out. Did you see that mm -hmm. in the fight? He said he wanted to fight. Uh, they was asking him, next, who yeah. would he fight next? And um, But he was like, nah, he'll fight uh, Crawford. Craw I guess I don't know who Crawford's going to fight, but he's definitely not interested in fighting Charlo anymore. So what's your take? <laughs> well, I haven't seen a lot of um, Canelo's fights before, mm -hmm. but I kind of like, you know, looked at some clips and things before the fight, and I was rooting for him. I felt like he was going to take it. Yeah. So. Are you a boxing fan? I don't have, like, a particular person. You know, mm. some people be rooting for, like, particular people, but I just like sports in general, so I just watch. Right, yeah. right. You play. I just enjoy it, yeah. So let me ask you this, then, real quick. Do you like boxing, or do you like uh, this guy, like, yeah, you like MMA better? I like boxing. I'm like, I'm an MMA. Like, I, I like sorry. it, but I prefer boxing. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm sorry. Come on, man. No, yeah, that's understandable. That's yeah. understandable. I think that, you know, the UFC is slowly taking over, though. I mean, Canelo is the last <clears throat> fighter from, like, the, the old school age. And I think that 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 people are going to be like following like that mm -hmm. i mean i know people are talking about crawford and there's some other people like tank tank davis and some of these other guys right but to me like you know i grew up in a different era of like yeah i was watching floyd i was watching sugar i was watching um de la hoya i was watching all these different fighters i was watching pacquiao mm -hmm. like right now i just feel like there's not that much like hype around them right as opposed to like you know, the UFC, like, you know, everybody's going to watch a fight if McGregor comes out. Everybody's going to watch a fight if John Jones is coming out. Mm -hmm. All these different fighters. So I just think that, uh, you know, that they're kind of have they've taken the thunder away from boxing a little bit because, you know, I think boxing has become a little stale. I mean, there was the fight before there was the undercard for this Canelo and Charlo fight. And I was watching it. I think the guy's name was Ramos and he clearly won the fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like he clearly won the fight, but the judges gave it to the other Look, guy. Yeah. And I was like, what is going on? This is why people don't, <clears throat> this is why we're like moving away from boxing because like some of this stuff that they're doing is just like, it's outrageous. So, um, my thoughts on the fight. Um, I, I really liked how Canelo came in. And just, you know, went at him. You know, he was not, like, backing off. I mean, I felt like Charlo was doing, like, he was almost trying to do, like, a Floyd Mayweather type thing. I was like, what are you doing? Like, you need to get in there and fight. Like, he's right. just backing away the whole entire time. And, uh, and like, Canelo was right there. He was, like, stepping to him, you know, and, like, wouldn't let him do anything, really. And Charlo was just, you know, chilling pretty much. And I was like... You got to go and you got to throw some some punches, man, because he was just sitting back like he was waiting on a decision or something, you know, um, and Canelo was just coming at him and was hitting him and he was pretty accurate for the whole entire fight. So, I, you know, ultimately, I felt like I kind of wasted my money a little bit, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, I felt like it was uh, it was good for boxing because, you know, I think it got a lot of people excited that there could be somebody who could take down Canelo. But I was right. I knew that nobody was going to beat him. Canelo is just, he's just on another level. Um, some of these young boxers that are coming up aren't on his, his level. And so, yeah, that's my thoughts on the fight. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. And there are a lot of boxers that's actually transitioning to MMA. Yeah, yeah there is. Ever looked, yeah, like some of the females as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, 
MMA is like becoming the thing, you know. I know he doesn't want to say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Listen, I'll, I'll, I, I'll, I love I'll boxing too. I'll, I'll watch MMA. I mean, am I in love with it? No. Maybe mm. I'll, I'll watch, but yeah. boxing is for me, you know. Yeah. I like. Listen, I like boxing, you know. Um, I think people think that I don't like boxing. Like, I, I, I always like box, boxing more. You know, like MMA is like new to me too, you know, and I don't know all the fighters in MMA either, but you know, as far as the sport goes, like, I just feel like there's a lot more um, excitement going on there as opposed to the boxing world. Well, boxing, I mean, there are a lot of, there are some exciting fights and of course some people are, um, you may not know, but and mo- mainly all the fighters that you name, the, the, all these guys are already retired. So, yeah, you know, know, with the Tank Davis, Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, you know, you got, you know, young, tough uh, boots and his young, tough fighters coming up, you know. Mm-hmm. And actually, Terrence Crawford's tough, too, but he's on the later decline of his career as well, you know. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> you have a lot of fighters coming up. You just don't know who these these people are. Like, I don't yeah. know everybody in MMA either. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying is, like, mm-hmm. I've, I need them to, like, you know, get the, get they get the hype up you know it, if you if you trust me if you if you follow a lot of these uh boxing platforms on social media you know who they are mm-hmm. but you probably would you follow like UFC or MMA or something like that I don't even I don't really follow I'm I'm basically a casual of UFC mm-hmm. and MMA I mean like um but you know I do know a few different fighters I can name you off like 10 different fighters from the UFC but I mean like <clears throat> you know, I, I do know some boxing guys, you know, um, like I saw a few at the fight, um, but I just know them because of like recent fights this year, you know? Right. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, people like Caleb plant, I know him because mm-hmm. he fought Canelo, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's the only reason why I know yeah. those guys. But. but, but I do agree though, like boxing is, is unsanctioned. So it is one of the, as Tyson put it, one of the dirtiest sports. There's no yeah. commission, so you can pay. <clears throat> you can pay if if she has a fighter, and you have a fighter, uh-huh. and I'm a promoter. You know, I can pay you off to get make our fighters fight. You know, because yeah. they they can't get any fights or whatever. But um, and I have seen a few times with the scorecard. Uh, that they a person should have won, but they lost. I mm-hmm. seen that on with Pacquiao a few times. Some fights he should have won that I feel that he lost. Yeah. Uh, the same one you when you text me the night of that fight, that guy yeah. who lost because I was looking at the highlights and I said, Ramos, like, man, yeah. Ramos, I, I thought he had it, but the, the black guy, whatever his name, they gave it to him, right? Yeah. You know, there was even a fight. I, I feel like when Danny Garcia fought in Puerto Rico, uh, because he was in Puerto Rico, and he, that's when he fought at one forty. They give him the fight. Clearly, the other dude had it. Yeah. But sometimes, man, you know, uh, when you're fighting in somebody else's backyard and he's Puerto Rican, so yeah. you know what I mean? So exactly. they're going to give him the edge. But boxing is like that. Sometimes, I hate to say it, but it's true. Sometimes, man, you don't get a fair shake with the judges. That's the one thing about boxing sometimes. And I was going to, that's mm. going to be my next thing, to, to mm. ask y'all if y'all think that, you know, some of the matches be rigged. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that goes back to the way it used to be, especially when, um, maybe I shouldn't say anything about that, but, um, (laughs) especially like back in the day, I felt like there was a lot of fights being rigged Mm -hmm. and different things of that nature. Um, you know, people taking a dive. There's some, some of the most iconic fights. People think that people have like taken dives for those. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, man, uh, were there some rig matches in boxing? Absolutely. I, I think across all sports. Yeah. They've been all rain. kind of, you yeah. know, so any, any, any time, put like this, any, it don't matter what you do. Anytime money's involved, mm-hmm. there's going to be some corruption. Yep. Yeah. Anytime I money's involved. I, I don't care if you're a farmer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or you, you heard, you heard in cattle, long as money is involved, it's going to be some corruption. Yeah. There's just no way around that. I think we all can agree on that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Word. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the next subject here. Um, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift have been in a love affair recently. 
Uh, really, the NFL has been in a love affair with uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> the last two weeks, um, Taylor Swift has been going to his games, and uh, it seems like this is like a budding romance. Um, I don't know what you guys' thoughts are on all of that, but uh, we can start off with Ken. Okay, so I did some digging. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much what I saw was, I think he was like at a concert or something at one point. Yeah. Or somewhere. And he, it was about a friendship bracelet. Yes. When it comes to Taylor Swift. And he was a little upset about it and whatnot, but it wasn't anything like, you know, major. Yeah. He like sent her a friendship bracelet with her, with his number on it. But I don't think she got it. She didn't get it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so after that, People start seeing them, you know, hang out or her be around his mom or something. And now everybody's talking about them being together. But are they really together? You think it's publicity? With with, with Hollywood, you never know. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's just my opinion. I think it probably is. I mean, they could be together, but you never know. Like nowadays, like what's real, what's. What's fake when it comes to people's relationship? Because some things are PR stunt Mm. or they feel like, okay, at this moment, oh, this is look good together. Both of you need this at this moment, maybe an album, maybe because of, you know what I'm saying? This is going on in your life. We need to put this good person and this person together to help, you know what I'm saying? Boost the careers, boost the the fans or something. But to me, I don't know if they're together or not. They could be friends. Do you think, uh, some sisters are disappointed because he broke up with the sister. From what I hear, they've been broken up since May of last year, right? What I what I read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And being a non, he's with. I mean, hey, if he's with her, a hey, hats off to him. You know, I mean, if that was last year, I'm sure she's moved on. He's, you know, obviously he's moved on. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do you think some sisters? Uh, you being a sister, feel some type of way that uh, you know he's with her and. He ain't with the sister no more. Or? I don't care who he with. <laughs> I mean, you know, you like who you like, love who you love, like, yeah. you know, regardless. But I have seen some sisters upset. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if the ex was quite over it because he was spotted with Megan Thee Stallion a couple months back. Oh, and really? people were trying to make it seem like they were possibly a thing after her and Party broke up. Mm-hmm. And the ex was you know she said some stuff yeah like she was mad mm-hmm. but i mean i feel like people just need to mind their business i get it yeah. that people are out there publicly mm-hmm. and so some people feel like well it's out there in the public so we have the right to do this or say that or you know carry on but i just feel like what is it how is it benefiting you yeah i, I think w- when celebrities are out publicly they always try to put them together i don't know why yeah. i feel that until they come out and publicly say something, then, you know, but even if they are together, you know, some people just want to just keep privacy, you know? What do you think before I say anything else? I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, I can go into it, you know, I think that, uh, let's get into a little bit of this is (laughs) like a publicity stunt because I think that, you know, if you look at Taylor Swift, like, not that her music wasn't already number one, but I mean, like more people are listening to her music. When you look at like the NFL right now, more people are watching the NFL. Like mm-hmm. these uh, games have been getting tons of ratings. Um, and I mean, for Travis Kelsey, man, I mean, like his like his sales for his jersey have gone up like 400 mm-hmm. <laughs> percent. So like, I mean, this dude, I mean, they're making money off of this and they're like. Not only that, they're like mixing Taylor's name, I think, and like Kelsey's name on yeah. the back of these jerseys, like making them and custom. putting them together, yeah. Yeah, I forget what the name is, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like it's definitely helping out both of them. Um, but I do, I do think that they're together, you know, because he shot his shot, you know, like he straight up shot his <laughs> shot, and like he let it be known that he wanted to get with her, and uh, you know, next thing you know, they're they're hanging out. I mean, listen, I mean, this could just be like a a fling, you know what I'm saying? Like, this could be like only a few weeks that they're like actually together, you know what I mean? But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's uh, it's definitely helped out a lot of people when you think about the NFL, when you think about Kelsey, when you think about 
Taylor Swift, not that she needed any help because she's about to become a billionaire off of this, um, you know, tour that she's doing right mm-hmm. now. So, but um, yeah, I think it, it helps out a lot of them. I just think that, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, what are you about to say? No, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think that when you look at like, Taylor Swift and like the guys that she's like usually dates, you know, this is a little bit different for her. Um, But, you know, I think that they're, they're a good couple, you know? Um, I do think that like Kelsey, it's weird uh, for a lot of, you know, I know a lot of black women have come out and like, they're just upset about this, you know, which, you know, I think that like, listen, if, He's a, he's a white guy. Say it. <laughs> Speak your mind. Listen, if if black men went after like a white girl like this, I don't know, man. Like I, th- I feel like the black woman wouldn't be okay with that. You know, well, you you feel like they damn I mean, sure wouldn't. I mean, they wouldn't you know, be okay with that. They would they would uh, they would have Doctor Umar come talk to us. Uh-uh. <laughs> He'd be talking about the snow bunnies and all this other stuff. You know, so that's just my thoughts on it. But I get it. Like he's got a little style. You know, he's. You know, he's a little hip. You know, he mm-hmm. dated a black girl. So, you know, um, I get it like that, you know, but that's just kind of my thoughts on that. <laughs> so you think if, uh, if it was other way around, black women wouldn't come for the? Oh, man, we'd be getting ragged right now. Because. If it was if it was the other way around, like say like a bunch of black men were like, oh, man, we love Taylor Swift. <laughs> like we would be getting ragged right now. Black men date snow bunnies every day, B. Like, <laughs> y'all been doing it for years. But they still get ragged, though. Yeah. They still get ragged, though. Yeah, and the same when a, a black woman dates a white man or someone outside of the race, what do black men do? Congratulate. I just, yeah, I just think that it's a double standard. I just think that it's a double standard because, I mean, really? listen. Yeah, because the women... When when Megan Miracle was with the um oh, yeah. the Prince dude, all the women were like, "Oh my God, yeah!" But like we love mm-hmm. this, you know. Like I just feel like if if it was if the shoe was on the other foot, as hey, they say, hey, you know, I feel like that particular <laughs> situation is. is in a different box. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why? Because he's a prince? <laughs> no, because you know you're breaking barriers with that right there. <laughs> you what? She breaking barriers, but they didn't want him in that. They didn't want her in that house. Though. That's true, but the fact that you know what I'm saying. A black mm-hmm. woman. That I feel like that's a different box. We're gonna throw that to the side. All right. Let's just okay. talk about this black situation. men. Yeah, this situation. I feel like the reason why the black women may be upset is because of like, for example, I know y'all seen the meme. It showed like what he looked like when he was with the black woman with the versus what he looked. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Shades. And because of the fact that, like, you know, they were together for so long and people were rooting for them and you know. A lot of black women felt like, oh, he attractive, he fine. And then all of a sudden, which, you know, like I said, you can date whoever you want to date. I don't care. But I feel like black women, they need to get over it. Black men need to get over black women dating outside the race, too. No, you say I, I don't it's a have double, a problem with it. No, but I'm just saying, though, in general, it. and you say that it's a double standard, but I feel like black women get more backlash for dating outside the race than black men do. No, 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 no. You're tripping. I feel like they'd be, they be like, yeah, black women, go get that. The black men be like... You're talking about these certain small groups of people on the internet <laughs> that be talking. Like, let's be for real. Okay. Think about it. Well, like, yeah, tell me, tell me. Okay, so for example, I know I've seen it with like friends, family members, and everything. A black guy can bring a white girl home. And of course, they they still may say things at first, not to them necessarily, but to the side. Mm -hmm. But eventually, boom, they accept it. Everything cool. A black girl bring a white man home. What you doing with that white man? That white man can't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. You're not going to sit here and make it seem like it's worse for the black men than white women. I mean, than the um, black women when it comes to that. I, I th- personally, I had to disagree because you going off social media. I mean, I just feel like no, I, I can I could tell you off of like the the black women like in my family, like since I was younger. Mm-hmm. No, 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 we've we've always been. Let me just say, let me just put this out there. Okay, we've <laughs> always been very inclusive. Like we've always been like, you know, um, open. And I'm I even have like interracial uh, relationships in my family. 
you know, like, mm-hmm. um, I'll do, yeah, my sister's like, you know, married to somebody who isn't of our race. I'll put it like that. Um, but, um, but you know, I mean, I felt like when I was younger, the vibes I was picking up, even from like my mom was like, yeah, so you're going to get with a nice black girl. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. I mean, like, I don't know. Am I, am I wrong? Did, have you well, felt that kind of like old school parents? Yeah, yeah that's that's okay. I mean, you got to realize, you know, our parents grew up in Jim Crow era. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. so yeah. quote unquote separate but equal. So you know, so of yeah. course that's how they looked at it. Then mm-hmm. I mean, now that was then, I don't know how they look at it necessarily. Now, of course, they may prefer you be with someone who looks like you, yeah. but some parents will say, look, long as you long as there's love and they don't mistreat you, then they they fine with it. But you know, um, you know, and, and I'm sure like your, your, I guess all our parents grew up in the segregated South. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's just how it was. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that's what I can say. Like, for, I think that's true for my family. Growing up, they would be like, you know, you love who you love or whatever. But yeah. they would always give us that talk. Like we may accept people, but you may not be accepted. That's mm. like, for example, it was mm. a white guy who had liked me in high school. I had liked him too. Like, he was cool peoples. Mm. But his grandfather was a known racist. Of course. And mm. so was his dad of and course. his uncle because that's how they were raised. Of course. Right. He would always be like, well, I'm not like that. And the second and the third, with me in my head, I'm like, I don't want to date you because it would never be a comfortable situation. I wouldn't want to be around your family if they don't like black people. Mm-hmm. And then I don't want you to get cut out the wheel and then you hate me. We break up later and he'd be like, you know, yeah. but like different stuff like that. So it's like, yeah. I get it. Like how he was saying, like our parents grew up in a certain era. So it's like, keep the family together, you know, keep the, mm-hmm. you know, keep us together type thing or whatever. But like I say, love who you love, like who you like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm the same way. Love who you love. You know, I'm, I was just saying, you know, Hey. I feel like there's a little bit of a it's, double standard. It's, 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 I, I agree with you. I think it's a, I think there's a, I think there's a slight Solution. double standard. You know, I, I, yeah, it is a double I, standard, yeah, but not the way standard. that y'all are saying it. But I, we all, we all I think there's a double standard, man. But hey, at the end of the day, I'm happy for uh, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. You got Taylor Swift. Now nah, that sister can go ahead and find her a beautiful black man. <laughs> <laughs> and she can be happy too. That's right. <laughs> Tell them. You know, so dying. We we got to get Doctor Umar in here, you know. <laughs> but we love the white snow, people, y'all. The we yeah, we love, we love we love all people. We love all races. That's right. So, so you don't discriminate. None of us discriminate. Nah, not at yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, what do you guys think of the um of the Tupac thing? They say that they found Tupac's murderer. Oh, Keefe D. Yeah. What do y'all think about that? They just arrested him. You going first? I know Good that's way. I know it's off script. <laughs> I feel like. It's a distraction. <laughs> well, no, I'm so a serious. A lot of people could say that like this Travis Kelsey thing is like a distraction. I, okay, because think yeah. about it. Every time something goes on, people jump on the next hot topic and things like that. I don't see anybody talking about the floods that's happening in New York. Well, even though it's clearing up now, nobody's talking about it. You know what I'm saying? I well, don't even know. What that's is everybody strange. talking about? The Taylor Swift situation and the mm-hmm. Tupac situation. And my thoughts on the Tupac situation is oh, it goes deep, guys. Okay. Y'all think he really did it? Or do y'all think he did it based off of somebody else telling him to do it? But you know they ain't going to arrest him. Oh, I know what you're uh-huh. saying. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. That's the rabbit hole. That rabbit hole goes yeah. deep. Yeah, it does Super go deep. deep. That rabbit hole goes <laughs> deep. <laughs> deep. Oh. Falls on that. I mean, I, I'm not going to speculate off of, you know, was he a hired gun, in other words, of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but far as I, I'll go based upon, because I've been hearing about him for years describing the accounts and what actually happened. Mm-hmm. And about even, even down to the car, they, they were driving and how the whole, thing, you know, and he sounds pretty convincing, you know, but uh, he was saying that. He wasn't the trigger man, but he was an accomplice. Mm-hmm. So he did admit that, you know. And um, <clears throat> and he'd been out of prison for a while. So they just later on just recently indicted him. So, I mean, he, he, he sounds convincing. But once again, hey, I don't know. You know, and I, I recently heard a, a statement with Suge Knight was saying that um, he said he won't testify 
about what happened, even though Sugar was there. And uh, he said he won't testify and he won't speak on it or whatever, you know. So I don't know, maybe it, it, maybe it's a street code. Uh, mm -hmm. What you think? I'm just glad that they finally got somebody. Now, do I think that, I mean, I, I haven't really kept up with the whole story, um, you know, because this was, I mean, he died when I was like one. You know? Oh my god! So, mm -hmm. baby. <laughs> so I don't really know um, that much about it. You know, I mean, I just know about his impact on like you know hip hop and rap and stuff like that. But um, I've never really kept up with the story because I always thought that it was a sad story because like he was going to be like one of the not just in the rap game he was going to be like one of the best ever like when it comes to like an orator in the black community. Like, I think that's why a lot of people like like him because, you know, lyrically, I felt like Biggie always had him. But um, but as far as like impact um, and as far as like being like a just like a strong voice in the black community, like I felt like Tupac had the ability to be on on a on a whole nother level, you know. And so I always thought it was a sad story. And so that's kind of why I never delve into it. I never like researched it. I know they had tons of documentaries about what actually oh happened gosh. that night. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I tried to right? see yeah. They resurface every year. Yeah, I know. Like, so I try to stay away from all of that, but um I mean I'm I'm happy to hear that there's like a person that they went after. But yeah, I don't know much about who this guy is, Keefy D and um Crip. and all of all all of the uh the other people. <laughs> Involved, you know, so that's what he was. He's a Compton Crip, yeah, yeah. I know it's just the way so, you said it, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, because he's from LA, so I feel yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. He cuz, he ain't blood, he's cuz. <laughs> no, don't put that out there. I'm gonna have to edit this. <laughs> that's what they say. That's what Snoop Dogg say. I know, I know, I know. You know, I ain't still about, say it. Hey, it's I ain't like about any of that life. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. What did you? <laughs> <laughs> Woody Holler, LA. I thought LA all the time. Yeah, hey, I thought she was talking about um Staple Center. It's now called the nah, Crypt. I'm done. And the it, crypt. You, you look like one I'm of the put a T on that. Don't the essays with the fedoras and stuff? You look like one I'm of the essays. This is full of racha. Oh like one my of the gosh. essays. La familia. <laughs> oh boy, you boy no. Oh, see, see, don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you, man. Uh, hey, I grew up with the Hispanics. You see? Exactly. Yeah, so you know, anyways, I'm not in mm. any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here. <laughs> I'm going to have to hide next time I go to L.A., man. Dang. <laughs> no, I'm done. just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we can move on to the next thing. <laughs> um, all right, so African-Americans are significantly less likely um, uh, when it comes amongst other racial ethnic groups. Um, to marry and less likely to remarry and more likely to divorce. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that statistic that they're coming out with? <laughs> you, you, you it's been around, it's been around for a while. Like we've, we've kind of known that, but you know, um, they're starting to talk about it more and more, um, you know, because the black, you know, family is kind of being um, dismantled in a way, you know, but um yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I thought it was pretty important um, that we, you know, delve into this subject. And I want to get y'all's thoughts on that. You know, I, I read briefly, um, but there's different numbers. Like yeah. I saw one that's generated by AI saying it's 47 percent. Then I saw another one that said it was 30 percent. So I don't know the exact the exact number on that. Um and one like one, the one that said thirty percent, and they were saying white uh, white families is at fifteen percent, and then Hispanics was at eighteen percent. So I don't know the exact numbers on the dynamics of the black family, yeah. but then at the same time, I wonder if it's, if it's a lot of uh, you know a lot of stereotypical rhetoric because at one time they were saying that oh black fathers don't take care of their kids, which that's a bunch of BS. You see plenty of black fathers take care of their kids all the time. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, because honestly, I think, and like I said, once again, this is another rabbit hole, that they've been trying to destroy black families for years. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for for years. Yeah. So I think, sometimes I think it might be some BS, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I think for as 
for as any any race, what he was saying, the Asian race stays together longer, right? But for us, things change with generations. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and our family generation, you stay together because, but as things change, you know, uh, you you have more uh, accessibility things. And women now, they don't have to marry a man if they choose to. They don't have to marry a man to take care of them right. and just to raise a family. Women can have careers now as well. So I don't know if that plays a part in with, uh, you know, them not getting married as, as, as much. You know, I mean, for example, look at the who's the richest black woman in America? Oprah Winfrey. Mm hmm. She's been with Stedman for the longest. She don't want to marry him for the simple fact that she don't want to lose her identity to him. But I don't think that is even possible because Oprah is such a big icon. They even have uh, they even have a, a section on her in the African American Museum, you know. So she's such a, a staple in the black community, you know. But um, yeah, you know, women have their own careers now. And, you know, they don't have to necessarily rely on a man to. Take it. And I mean, some do, but, you know, they don't necessarily don't have to do that. You know, they can have their own careers or what have you. But it's like, I don't know. The numbers vary. So, I mean, that's my take. Okay. Gotcha. What do you think about that? Like he was saying with the numbers, I don't necessarily believe the numbers, just like how at one point they try to make it seem like black people were the ones who were on like a uh, food stamps and all of that stuff and right, that number right. isn't even right exactly. we're definitely not even the number one numbers with that what so i feel like with it comes to divorce rates and stuff i feel like the numbers are a little little crazy but to piggyback off what he said i feel like with divorce and stuff now right i feel like a lot of people are growing and learning themselves and healing versus back then when people were married they were sticking by their husbands, whether they was cheating or not. Not saying that they weren't some cheating wives too and husbands stuck behind them. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, especially in the black community, you have the, let's, let's take your great grandmother, for example. Mm -hmm. Her and your grandfather been together for 60, 70 years, got a bunch of kids. Right. But he done stepped out several times, but she was never going to, you know, leave her husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you got people that's like, I know what I deserve. Yeah. I may love them. We may have kids together, but a kid ain't going to keep me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I want them to be a father, but we don't have to be together if you're not going to treat me right. Yeah. And then you also got people who used to abuse their wives and stuff. People ain't putting up with a lot of things nowadays. And Facts. I can say that from my own personal experience because I'm divorced. Mm -hmm. I didn't get married to get divorced. I tried everything possible before resulting to a divorce, but... It was a healthier situation to raise my child in a separate home from my ex-husband who put his hands on me or who would mm -hmm. cheat and stuff. I'm not dealing with that just to say I'm married or not to break the statistics. You know what I'm saying? Like, it right. is what it is. Yeah. But I feel like nowadays there's a lot of people who are breaking generational curses when it comes to mental health, yeah. emotional <clears> health, <throat> just, you know, just different things like that. So I feel like that's another reason why they're like, I'm not settling for less than what I deserve. I'll be by myself instead of being with somebody who's not bringing me the same peace that I'm offering myself, you know? Yeah. So I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing when it comes to certain situations, but also, like he said, mm -hmm. I feel like there was a lot of things put into play many years ago for them to create different things for it to break up the black families. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't like that part about it, but it's kind of like, what can we really do right now? You know what I mean? But try to be better. But I don't really feel like divorce and stuff should necessarily be looked at as a bad thing because there's a lot of people across the board getting divorced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same with other, you know, <coughs> races as well, like with Asians and stuff. It's a lot of stuff they put up with. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At, at one point, uh, what, the, if they was having a, a, a daughter, they was killing the babies, but they're still standing by their husbands because mm -hmm. that's their culture. You can't divorce or, yeah. you know, whatever the case is. So Yeah, and like China, I think that was the thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. It's a it's a tough topic, and that's another one that can take us to a deep rabbit hole if we really take it back. Just like putting drugs in the community, but hey, we ain't going to get yeah. into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think the divorce rate is like 50%. And, you know, Chris Rock has that joke of like, 
And the the people, <laughs> those are just the people like who had the courage to like leave, you know, pretty mm-hmm. much, you know, do you, can you imagine how many people like stay in mm-hmm. like a relationship like that, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, I, I liked what you guys talked about with the statistics. We don't really know if that's true. If it is true, you know, like, I mean, I think that's sad, you know, um, right. because like the strongest thing in the world is, a you know, black family, you know, like, um, and so, and I think that's probably why people have tried to like tear apart the black family, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's a sad statistic. I mean, I grew up, um, in a family, um, with, you know, both of my parents around and, you know, my parents, they were together for 40 something years before, you know, my dad passed away. And so, um, you know, I don't really know divorce, you know, and, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because now, you know, seeing so many people get divorced and even like me now, I'm, I'm at that age where like, um, I can look at my mom and she's like, you know, it's time for you to get, start getting married, you know, like Mm. getting that little pressure, (laughs) you know, like you start getting that pressure, you know, from your family Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And like, now I'm looking up, I'm like, man, I don't know. Like this is, this landscape is, it's so weird now, you know, it's different, you know, um, yeah. it's a different time. And so like, I don't even know if I will get married, you know, um, just because, you know, I think that, you know, it's a tough thing, you know, to be with somebody for years, you know, like the same person for <laughs> years, you know, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's a lot, you know, to, to kind of think about, you know, I think years ago it was, you know, our life expectancies were lower, you know, and like now people are living way longer now. And so like, you know, and you want to find somebody that you can grow old with and stuff like that, you know? Um, And, you know, I I think that I, I definitely want to get married, but like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, like you could lose everything you know, getting into a marriage, you know, like you could grow apart, like the, all of those different things. And so, you know, I, for the black community, you know, um, I just want us to like be able to to have those marriages that last forever, you know, but, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that's, you know, a pipe dream or something, you know, so, but anyways, I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> no, you're fine. I don't but, think it's a pipe dream. I just feel like yeah. a lot of people before they get into marriage, even though you fall in love with somebody and you feel like, oh, this is the person for you, you need to do some digging because there's a lot of people who aren't healed. They're still mm-hmm. carrying those traumas and things that they've been through mm-hmm. and they bring it into the relationship. Yeah. And you may not even see it in the relationship, but then it pops out when you're married. Mm-hmm. And then that's another thing that tears things apart, too. So it's like we really need to work on healing. I'm not saying everybody in the world don't need to work on healing, but mm-hmm. it's just something about the black people. It's that stigma with therapy or, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm. You really need to get help and heal from your traumas before you decide to add somebody else to your life. Yeah. Since you, you were the only one who was married of uh, the three of us, do you think that it's best to live with a person first before you marry him? Because they say you would never know anyone that well, you know. I have statistics on that too. Okay. but So... I say yes, but I kind of did it like old fashioned. Okay. Mm. We technically already had kind of lived together Mm -hmm. because we were deployed together. Okay. And we was already boyfriend and girlfriend and engaged during that time. So Mm -hmm. it was kind of like living together. But we didn't, we lived together like maybe like two days before we got married, like in the States. Oh, wow. Yeah. So y'all still didn't kind of know, know each other? Like, we was friends first. Mm hmm. And it was like a, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little, you know, delusional. And um, sometimes you don't see the red flags. So like in my head, if it's a red flag, in my head, I add blue to the red and I see oh. purple. Like, oh, I like purple. It's pretty. Yeah. I should go to it. You know, like, whoo. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, I feel like I've always held on to the friendship and how things were. So it's like, even when the person does something that you never seen before, it's like, this isn't right, mm-hmm. but 
when we've been friends, this was such a good person or I know this person isn't like this. You know what I'm saying? So it ended up being like a situation like that. So I don't really know. Like sometimes I feel like you should live together with a person. But to me, I feel like it it doesn't matter if you live with a person, been with a person for 20 years, Mm -hmm. 30 years, 40 years, you're still going to learn something new about them all the time. Yeah. Because we're constantly growing. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're evolving. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And like how you exactly. were saying with the uh, being with a person, and then like you know you grow apart. Yeah. If you really want your marriage to work and you want to be with them, even if you fall out of love, you got to find a way to find your way back to each other. Mm. But see, yeah. a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't feel it anymore. Let me go. I don't know, man. I, Instagram, I think, Facebook. Yeah, I'm a swipe. person. Swipe left. I think, man, if, <laughs> I hate to say this. If I get married, and I, I, if I try, but so much, and I'm not happy, I'm going to be one of them dudes getting divorced, too. And the way I look at it like this is because life is short. So, some I don't know, some people will stay with someone just because they or they don't want to be alone. They'll stay with someone they're unhappy mm-hmm. with. Yeah. Versus finding happy with, happiness in, you know, within yourself. Mm-hmm. Be alone for a while or just date. I'm the type of person, if I'm not happy... I'm sorry, we we got to go. Meet, but what meet. are you trying? Are you at least trying like therapy? Like yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like try. That? I'll okay, try. Okay, well, I mean, no, 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 no. Within the ramifications of infidelity, now you know once that happened, no, you mm-hmm. got to go. It so you would go. you would leave the second that if she cheated, if she cheated, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm out. And that, honestly, and if I did the same, I would. I, I if she, if she feels that way, then I expect her to do that. If she don't want to give me another chance. And I'd be like, I get it. Because have I been in your shoes, I would probably be feeling the same way, you know. Mm. And I, I respect that 100%. But, you know, if it's outside of cheating and, you know, something going on, it might be a, a slight depression or something like that or just whatever. If it's yeah. something I feel that we can work through and we still love each other, then so be it, you know. Then let's just try to build, like you said, try to reconnect and reestablish, mm-hmm. you know. And even if we got to sit down and talk to counseling, yeah. And I, I'm all for it, you know. Uh, but but if if nothing is working, I'm out. And I, I and I'm sorry, like I'm not letting the kids keep me. I'm not right. gonna stay because the kids are gonna see you unhappy too. They know, mm-hmm. damn, daddy don't love mama like that. Mom, we sleep in separate rooms. What's what's the point? Right. You know. Yeah. And that do affect kids more yeah. than people think they do. Yeah, so, kids yeah. are smarter than people give them credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so real quick, what you said because you you brought up a good point. You said no matter year, five years, ten years, twenty years, even if you live together, once you you y'all were friends mm-hmm. and you said y'all lived together like two days. Once y'all were married, what percentage? How much you felt that you knew him when y'all got married? Well, we got married. I felt like maybe, maybe like 90. Oh, really? Because we were, when I say we were friends, we weren't just like regular friends. We, we became best friends. Yeah, yeah. And like, we went through some stuff together. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And then the deployment, and we were engaged on our deployment. We didn't come back home with everybody. You know, like, so mm-hmm. we went through a lot of different experiences, personal and when it came to the military, or just like he had stuff going on. I was there for him and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So... To me, you know, sometimes like when you're with somebody, it feels like, oh, we know each other. But then you also know, okay, I'm still learning or whatever the case right, may right. be. Yeah. But I guess like because I'm an old soul, like I already knew like, oh, we're going to forever be learning each other mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But I wish I would have listened to the red, the red flags. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got to after we got married, flags. like probably like a few weeks later, a lot of his dirt came out. Mm. And you know, he that's cheating. All of that. that. That's one of my biggest fears with marriage. I feel like I won't when once you get married, she gonna change or some things gonna come up because she gonna say, "Oh yeah, you, you can't really you can't leave like you want to now. Mm-hmm. You got to be here now." You, yeah, you're in it now. I, yeah, you know yeah. I, I, that's why I got a feeling like that's one. I'm, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, right? But that's a fear I have about marriage. She gonna change things she used to do. She ain't gonna do, or you're gonna see a whole different uh, character trait. Something that's right. gonna conflict with you you know what i mean it is going to change up you know and, I, and i'm saying it happens to women too men do that to women mm-hmm. as well you know right. but yeah. that's that's one of my one of my biggest fears of, of marriage 
And there's nothing wrong with having a fear of marriage, yeah. but I feel like that's something that you will have to work on if you ever want to mm-hmm. be in a serious relationship that may lead to marriage. Because yeah. you would carry that fear with you, and that could affect you in your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But it's understandable, though. Yeah. yeah. That's just like how you were saying, like, you were afraid, like, I don't know if I can get married. Cause yeah. I mean, these different things. And I, when you, I, I mean, completely understand. the deck is stacked against you. That's the mm-hmm. way that it feels. Like, <laughs> the deck is stacked against you. You know, like, you know, are you going to be able to, like, stay in a marriage and do the correct things? You know, I have, like, other views on, like, marriage, um, you know, probably different from other people just because of like my faith and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, you see people in the church even have, you know, get divorced and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's totally, you know, anything can happen, you know? And right. so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think most people do have like fears and, um, and worries about things like that. Um, and sometimes that can, uh, make people want to get married more just to prove people wrong, but mm, you know, and which that's is crazy. A, yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, it is like a weird thing to think about and it sucks that like, you know, it happens more in our community mm-hmm. supposedly. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have someone that you can, as you say, grow old with, and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and be able to overcome certain mm-hmm. obstacles, you know, but, the reality is we live in the real world. And I think social media plays a part in a lot of things, you know. Yeah. I think people have a false misconception on what they should be looking for or who, who a person should be, yep. you know, um, you know, versus building together. And that's not everybody. That's some versus you building together. Oh, this dude already got to have six figures and this, yeah. that, and the third. And I mean, because we all come with some form of baggage, some just heavier than others, but... You know, I, I think reality, uh, for as um, you know, uh, social media, it just have a, a, a distorted sense of reality. To be honest with you, I agree. You know, it's, it's things, a you comparison know? thing going on. It's like, oh, her man did this for her, or yeah. his girl did that for it. Like, do whatever works for you exactly. in your relationship. Exactly. You don't yeah. know what them people got going on behind mm-hmm. closed doors. They could be miserable, but putting on for the book because it's not your business. Right. And you sitting here idolizing them. Mm-hmm. And the whole time you have a good thing, but here you about to mess it up because you're trying to compare it to. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. whoever it is that you're looking I at. Agree. I agree. I agree. Right. That's why I was never big on the. And I'm not knocking nobody for what they do. It just is my preference. Like they would look at Jay Z and Beyonce. People would repost them relationship goals. Mm-hmm. Listen, I never look <laughs> at nobody else and want my relation their relationship to be my goals. You know, yeah. I'm like, why? They they got their own problems. You know, exactly. you exactly. And you know about elevator gate. What happened in the elevator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, God. So obviously they got their own problems, like everybody else. I'm sure that they work out. You know, work. You know, work through things, but I never, I never ever look at nobody. If any, if anybody, you should look at it would be your parents if they're still together. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, my parents I, ghetto. I would say, you know, well, you know, you can get <laughs> the good. You can get the good from that, you know. But people who you don't know, who that's the that, and that's one of the problems with America, man. We in love with celebrities so much. They love it. celebrities yeah, are royalty. That's why back with the Taylor Swift thing. It's about football. Why are you showing us Taylor Swift? I don't even listen to her music. I know who yeah. she is, but I'm not saying she's bad. I don't even know her music like that. You know, apparently listen, she do. do you listen to her music? Yeah. No, yeah, no she more. Did. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing against but her, but know. I did used to listen to her like when I was like in high school. I mean, I listen yeah. to everything though. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just like, oh, I'm some diehard Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> but like I, when I say I listen to everything, rock, metal, whatever. That's, that's good. You, music. But I'm not going to lie. Large palette. I didn't know who Taylor Swift was until Con- the Kanye moment. Oh, when he really? got up there. Wow. I didn't know who she was, but I did start listening to some of her music. You know, yeah. I mean, I was young when all that happened. Like mm-hmm. that was like what two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine oh, when that happened. Yeah. So yeah, I was young. So I yeah. used to, I used to, I liked some of her music. You know, some of them were, ca- you know, some of the songs were catchy or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, I started to, I won't say like dislike her, but I just didn't pay t- a too much attention to her like mo like recently but i saw this movie um i think it's called like miss america 
And it like went to like Sundance and like a bunch of other, you know, different festivals. And Mm -hmm. so that's kind of why I turned it on. And it was on like Netflix. And it kind of made me like like her a little bit better because she was in it. Yeah, it was okay. a documentary about her. Okay. So, oh, okay. and like she goes into like politics and she talks about like her album, her like um, the things that she does to like write songs. Cause you know, I kind of mm. like, I do a little bit of music as well. Like, so I write music and stuff like that too. Um, so, like, that kind of made me like her a little bit more. But, you know, I haven't really paid attention to her that much, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I do want to just watch the football game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that. But so, but. I've never idolized any uh, yeah. celebrity. I make mm-hmm. jokes all the time about Denzel Washington. Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, my God. My man, my man, my man. Uh, oh, you love some Denzel. I'm just kidding. Right? But, yeah, like, I'm, I like his movies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't feel bad. A lot of people love Denzel. Yeah, yeah but I don't, I don't love, love him. Mm. I love his work because right. I don't know him. Yeah, right. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like I'm a fan of his work, but I've mm-hmm. never been like no nobody. Like you know how people act over these celebrities? Yeah, yeah. people go crazy, out, crying, crazy, spending yeah. bands to go see them. I would never. The Swifties. I don't care how yeah. good you are. I don't care how dope your music is. That's just not it. Yeah, that's. I don't not. ask people for autographs. It's so many people yeah. I've no, seen in person. Not. Because in my head, I'm like, they're human too. They just out here trying mm-hmm. to chill. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I get exactly. it. The fans yeah. do help you to a certain extent. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like you, your fans are your fans for a reason. But I feel like some people take it too far. Too far. Oh yeah, too I agree. Far. I agree. I, I can't see myself passing out full over another human yeah. being, another person. I think there's a disorder for that too oh really i think so yeah <laughs> yeah it i feel is. what they call it i can't think of the name right now but it you, is? You're yeah. what is it right called for sure oh, i can't remember is it called fan asphyxiation i don't know i don't know i don't, I don't know, know what it's called. you just made it up i did i sure did didn't it sound <laughs> professional <laughs> fan asphyxiation you know what? So <laughs> but you know what that's what always made me nervous about really coming out of my shell to do what i'm doing in school now because i always felt like oh i know I can make it to be on TV or uh, do different things, but I'm not that type of person that like that attention. If you reach a certain so celebrity. for a long time, yeah, I wouldn't do it. And that's even like now I'm just starting off like you know with the commercials and voiceovers and stuff. And then I have people I haven't talked to since 2010. 2009, and then during that time, I thought they didn't even ask with me like that. Mm-hmm. They in my inbox, I saw your commercial. Matter of fact. Or hitting me up, like, about different stuff. Like, oh, I saw the new the new clip on Facebook. Or, yeah, you everywhere. I've been watching BET. Oh, yeah. I was they heading to Columbia. They came on doing the fight. Saw, I saw the commercial. Oh, really? And yeah, I'm just like, oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take this. How could you... How, how, I want to ask you guys. How would y'all... Your, if all of a sudden... Your celebrity, what's the word? Uh, Your celebrity Mm -hmm. uh, advances. Now, you're not saying you necessarily got as much money, but your fame, you're known. How would y'all handle that? I got to pray on it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because I got the billboards. I got the commercials. I got that stuff. So I know the next level is even higher. You know what I'm saying? Like when I really start putting stuff Mm. out. But to me, I don't... I'm still, mm. I'm still on the fence. And it's like, I know, like, you know, my pastor didn't tell me, like, don't sleep on your dreams. Mm. You've been doing it long enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, you know, stay prayed up, so on and so forth. But then at the same time, the other part of me is like, Ugh, I'm more of an introvert than y'all think. I'm a homebody. Mm. I be in the house. I'm dark. I don't like people. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, to know that people could be like, you know, I can't have no privacy. I can't go shopping. I can't go. Oh, man. I don't like that. (laughs) So to think about that makes me, it makes me anxious. It gives you anxiety. Yes, and I already have anxiety. anxiety. I don't need that. That's ghetto. I know. How about you, Brooks? (laughs) I honestly don't want to be famous. I'll take the money, though. (laughs) Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Let me get that money, though. But how do we do this line of work? Yeah, I know. Without a certain I just, status, even I with just the podcast. Know, I just know, like, if I was, like, sitting in a restaurant and I'm trying to eat my food <laughs> and you come over. I mean, I, you know, 
if it's only happening like maybe once a day or something like that, mm-hmm. I'd be, I would be fine with that. But like some of these celebrities basically just get like harassed. Like Kim yeah. Kardashian and stuff like that. Imagine you just like walking out your house and people are taking pictures of you. Oh my God. Uh, some, of them got, some of them got stalkers. Yeah. Drew That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Big Sean and uh, oh, Janae and Aiko, they, they, they have a stalker. I think the stalker broke in their house. You had Chris oh. Brown who had a stalker broke like that, breaking his house. Um, See, I don't know if I could do it. Tiana Taylor. Yeah. I think she had a situation yeah. where when her house is in LA. I don't know how I would handle all that. But yeah, it and that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I'm a I'm a real country girl. I'm a real mm-hmm. Southern belle. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be out there. Yeah, and people interrupting me. You saying like if one person come while you eating, don't bother me while I'm eating. Yeah, <laughs> can I, mean, I eat in peace? I feel you. I feel you. That yeah. that's kind of how I am too. You know, like love like, me from a distance, babe. Like yeah. write on my wall if you want to send me a little you message. Know, that, that's that's that's, like, that's the reason when I first got in the film, I was study. I studied acting. That's what I was going to do. But then when I came to classes, I gravitate more as a director. For mm-hmm. one, because I can help other people as well, direct, mm-hmm. and then also too, I don't gotta be in front of the camera. Because usually most people ain't. If you in film like that, then you would know. But most people is not really checking for the director. You know what I'm saying? If I yeah. do a film and it does real well, and I cast you guys, they looking at y'all because exactly. you guys are the stars. So I don't, and, and real real talk, I probably make more money than y'all, but y'all in the front. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can. That gives me. You know, uh, keep me level headed so I can just kind of stay in the back. You know what I'm saying? Even though I might be the one who wrote it, directed, and maybe, you know, executive produce it, but they see yeah. you guys. Now, granted, you guys can get a bag too, but mm-hmm. then I can just sit back. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're not really checking for me. That's that's one of the main things why, why I like about directing, why I love directing, you mm-hmm. know? And, and it's just for me, it's, it's art, it's being creative. It's like me painting, but using people bringing my, my my canvas to life that's yeah. that's what i like about it and then also i'll feel a way if i just if i leave here i go to walmart nobody pay me no attention mm-hmm. now all of a sudden december my movie and everybody mobbed me i'm like i was just in here and right. y'all wouldn't looking at me before why y'all in my face now you know? right so yeah i i, I give me the wealth I, you can have the fame exactly well yeah, this podcast has gone below through the roof so what y'all gonna do when the fans come Oh, it's Brooks and Hendrick. I'm a hide. <laughs> I'm a hide. I'm gonna just tell mine, Brooks. Cause you know what you talking about. That's that's funny you said that. And honestly, dang boy, that kind of. Oh, he uh, ain't gonna do the podcast no more. Man, that, <laughs> don't be scared, man. Man, cause this you know it. what? Listen, this don't sleep last on your gift. You ne- listen. You never know, <laughs> hey. like that that break you looking for, or whatever the case is, it oh, could be. Hey. Now we got to have bodyguards. I hate to say this, boy, but <laughs> real talk, I don't know. Because, like I say, I don't really have anxiety with certain things. That I guess I, for certain things. You remember the one guy who was in New York? He's a big, and he he calls a big riot. He's giving up free stuff. Oh, yeah. Kaisenat. I, I never heard him. Apparently, he's a big social yeah. media. YouTuber and, and Twitch. Twitch. And yeah. I'm like, and I was like, so now I had to realize, that, okay, people getting just off internet-based stuff, you know, social media, people becoming famous. And it, it's not just about being on TV or movies now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, dang, you know. And I'm just, only thing, honestly, only thing I'm thinking about is, oh, yeah, you know, eventually we'll get paid off doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about going out and people seeing me and mm-hmm. knowing who I am. Yeah. That part, I don't want. Yeah, I'll be real with you. I don't yeah. want that part. So, uh... I don't know, man. I don't know. This my days might be numbered. <laughs> Did you start that foolishness this today? Is this is the last podcast. Yeah. I don't know, man. With the Black Summit, <laughs> I feel like the scariest part to me though is I have a kid, mm. Mm. and I don't want his life changed. Even though, to be honest, he's supportive. Yeah, he loves it. Anytime. Mm. Okay, so I haven't seen my commercial on TV. You've never seen it. I've, I've seen it behind the scenes. Oh, but, but like, actually on, on TV? TV? While you were watching TV? You know? I just started really seeing the billboards like a month ago. Mm. Yeah. Like when, you know, everybody was telling me yeah. about it. And I was like, matter of fact, you was the first person to tell me about it. Oh, okay. And I was like, seen it a few times. I was like, billboard? What, what billboard? <laughs> then when you got to think about it, like, dang, 
I signed mm-hmm. them papers that release. Yep. Yeah. It could end up anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then at first when I was driving around, I still was not seeing it. And then next thing you know, it's literally on every freaking electronic thing. I have people screenshotting it, yeah. sending it to me. And I'm just like, I had somebody invite me to a party recently. Mm. Oh, I see you. You like, well, you know, you've been at a club, but I, I see you. <laughs> man, you getting big time, man. This is only the beginning. <laughs> we having a, 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 a bash tonight. Come through. Yeah. This is only the beginning. Yeah. No. The sky's the limit for you. No. I'm out of town. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever really be comfortable with it. I'm still getting comfortable with people coming to me about this stuff. It's, I'm not saying that I'm not proud of myself mm-hmm. or like grateful for the opportunity because I'll never be an ungrateful person. But the yeah. type of person that I am. I don't get hype off of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see you before you see the only time I really like smile about it for the most part is like my kid. Cause he'd be like, Oh mama, I see your commercial. Oh, okay. We're driving yeah. a, we're driving with Nana, Papa, and I saw you on the board. You know, <laughs> yeah. like so that that makes yeah. me like, you know, smile yeah, or laugh. Yeah, yeah. But when other people tell me, I'd be so awkward, I'd be like, Oh, for real? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's one reason why. Should fame ever darken my door? Should fame find me, even though I'm not looking for fame? That's why I think I'll stay in South Carolina. Mm. I'll stay here because yeah. I don't think nobody is it's, it's not slow, but it's, it's not Atlanta. It's not New York. It's not yeah. California. You know. Uh, South Carolina coming up, though. It's, but, but you it know, is. I, 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 honestly, I think here, like I said, should fame find me. Mm-hmm. I don't think nobody would bother me here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people, like when you think about Matthew McConaughey and mm-hmm. some of these other people, they're Chappelle. moving out to like Texas. Dave Chappelle's in, in Ohio. Ohio right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of these people are moving out of Hollywood um, to get away from all of that craziness, you know? Yeah. So I got to yeah. go, though. I think I definitely. You gotta go. Yeah, I, I would, know you I would. wouldn't be able to. You be going in to South Cali? Carolina? Yeah. Heck no. You going? That's ghetto. You going to Texas? <laughs> no, I, Texas. New York. Too. Oh, what? I know where you going. Where's she going? You going? Oh, you don't want me to oh. say? No, well, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Not. I don't know okay. if this is right. Where? Oh. Arizona. No, no, no. 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 Oh, okay, no, then I didn't. But it was cool me. though. There, I'll, I'll go back to visit. But no, oh, okay. I can't. I can't. I'll Las tell Vegas? y'all off the you camera. Know, you know, Ar- no. <laughs> Ar- Arizona is right there by California, so that would it be is. like a nice like place to like you know. Yeah, be it, it's cool. We used, but yeah. the schools because you know I had a kid, so I look at top right. schools are best yeah. places for him. I got first. You. And, you know, also the energy or whatever. So I take him along with me and be like, hey, how you feel about this place? He down for whatever, though. But I just yeah. know for me, I would not be able to be in South Carolina. I've already had stalkers you. before in the regular world. Like, so, so you, see, you out of here. <laughs> yeah. She says she's built for this. I mean, I really haven't been staying around because <laughs> a school. Gotcha. I, yeah. I was supposed oh, to. Oh, really? Yeah. Would, okay. Now, my granny passed in August. I dipped. And then mm. from there, we were going to move from Arizona once I got my mental together. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, finish more and, and, you know, just go through it. Mm-hmm. But then when I came back for an important appointment, something told me, you know what? Instead of waiting until tomorrow, swing by Trident. In that time, my grandfather was dying. Mm-hmm. So when I got to my mom's house, which I talked to them that morning, so he was mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, yeah, we're on the way down there. I'm like, okay, well, I just got this stuff to do. Appointment. I might stop by, by tech. I don't know. Happened so last minute. I was like, man, bump it, make, make a U turn. Came to tech on my way back to my parents' house. That's when she was like, something going on with him, but I already knew. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then he passed. So then it was just like, dang, my mom lost both her parents, both her parents within like four months. I'm not going to dip out right away. You know what I mean? And my siblings, they don't live here. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, all right, you know what? I'll stick around for a little while. I really only came here to take a couple classes. Mm. I had no intentions on getting a degree. Yeah. But then, you know, advisor spoke to me and was like, listen, I feel like this would definitely be a great move for you. Get you in front of the camera. Da, 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 da. And even though it's what I wanted to do at the same time, I still was like, uh, <laughs> sounds scary when you say it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I want that attention, you know? Yeah. But then I end up sticking around. And so that's why I'm still here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good time with Ken is in the house. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming back. 
You know? No problem. Yeah. I hope you guys, uh, you know, don't try to get rid of me again. No, never, never. Listen, did. I mean, your people were talking mess. I was like, man, I'm just trying to get her on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's delusional. <laughs> She'll be back again with some more juicy, <laughs> juicy subjects. Yeah. Some juicy topics. Oh, We're yeah. going to dive in. We'll dive in to all type of things. Oh, oh yeah, my here we go. Yeah. We're cooking it up. We We're need that. We need up. that female perspective. <laughs> We're going deeper into relationships and into kinks oh, Lord. and fetishes. Oh my goodness, this man's breaking the fourth wall. So yeah, look at him. <laughs> so yeah, so y'all just just keep following us. We ain't gonna say when we're gonna do it, but <laughs> there gonna be something. So you just gotta keep. So you gotta keep looking and keep subscribing, so you see when these topics coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for being on. Yeah. Uh, once again, I'm Brooks. And I'm Hendrix. And I'm Ken. Thank you for being with us. All right. See you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>